Here we are looking at the papillary thyroid carcinoma, which is a malignant epithelial tumor showing evidence of follicular cell differentiation, and it is characterized by typical distinctive nuclear features. So here we have the tumor, and uh, in this part of the slide we can appreciate normal thyroid parenchyma. If we are lucky, the papillary carcinoma is really papillary, as in this case, in this part of the picture, we see the papillary features. And uh, this is also described as classic variant of the papillary thyroid carcinoma. Unfortunately, this is not always the case. Sometimes we can see a <clears throat> follicular variant of the papillary carcinoma, like for example, in this part of the tumor. And we also have uh, many different morphological variants like um, macrofollicular diffuse sclerosing variant, oncocytic variant, or tall cell variant, which is not clinically important. It is important for the histopathologist uh, so that we uh, recognize the tumor and not uh, misdiagnose it as something else. However, all of these variants of papillary carcinoma should have typical nuclear features. So this part of the tumor is associated with papillary type of growth. We can recognize the true papillary structures with uh, thin fibrovascular cores. And here we have the core of the papilla with uh, small blood vessels with uh, fibrous tissue in it. In some other parts, the tumor forms the follicular structures. And let's go higher to see the nuclei. And here we see that the nuclei are bigger, so we can see nuclear enlargement. Uh, the nuclei are overla overlapping, meaning that uh, they cross and they overlapping one to another and they are slightly elongated or oval shaped unlike normal uh, thyrocytes. We can also find irregularities in the nuclear membranes and um, typical longitudinal grooves and also intranuclear pseudo inclusions. So in this cell we can find the longitudinal groove, here we have the longitudinal groove, here we have another one, here we have another one. Nuclear pseudo-inclusions are slightly less clear in this picture. So let's say here we have something that looks like small intranuclear inclusion. But more important than nuclear pseudo-inclusion is the typical characteristic of the chromatin or typical appearance of the chromatin, which is chromatin clearing and empty appearance of the uh, of the nuclei. So here we have a very clear nuclei, which is also sometimes described as orphan anii nuclei, according to the cartoon character from the 1920s. So it is quite easy to diagnose papillary carcinoma if it looks like this. But let's uh, try to move to the follicular area of the tumor. So for example, here we don't see papillary structures, we have follic follicular structures, but we can still appreciate the typical appearance of the nuclei. So enlarged nuclei uh, with longitudinal grooves, with nuclear uh, membrane irregularities, with clear empty chromatin and overlapping. Quite a useful sign is also the difference, different appearance of the colloid, which is slightly darker um, it is sometimes described as bubblegum appearance of the colloid with uh, scalloping with these bubbles around and it is much darker and more pink than uh, normal areas uh, of the thyroid gland. Maybe this is slightly better example of the thick dark colloid. Uh, papillary carcinoma is sometimes associated with somoma bodies or concentric uh, calcification small calcification bodies, which is quite uh, uh, useful for the radiological appearance of the tumor. And uh, sometimes we can also see uh, multinucleated giant cells inside of the colloid, inside of these follicles. But nuclear features uh, is what, <coughs> uh, what we need for the diagnosis of papillary carcinoma. Uh, prognosis of papillary thyroid carcinoma is usually quite good, uh, especially when it's uh, limited to the thyroid gland and when it's not associated with 
metastasis. Uh, thanks for watching.